Hey everybody, RetroPyGuy here. Today I'm going to show you how to map games in the Open Beats of Rage collection on the RetroPyGuy 512GB game collection card. Before we get started, you will need to attach a keyboard to your system in order to map these games. If you don't already have a keyboard, I recommend checking out the wireless USB keyboards we have available on our website, www.retropyguy.com. They're super compact and easy to attach, which just makes everything so much easier than using a full-size wired keyboard on RetroPy. I'll put a direct link to those in the description below so you can easily check those out. So the first thing that we need to do is plug in a USB keyboard into one of our USB ports on our Raspberry Pi and make sure that we have a regular gamepad controller on hand that has already been set up and mapped with RetroPie to map these controls to. Next we're going to jump into our Open Beats of Rage game collection and we're going to jump into any of the games on here. The mapping process is pretty much the same throughout. So I'm going to jump into Beats of Rage here because it's just a quieter game so you'll be able to hear me easily while we navigate through these options. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is our buttons on our gamepad controller aren't going to work yet. So I'm hitting the start button on my PlayStation gamepad controller here. Nothing's happening. I'm actually uh, making a screenshot at the bottom there. So we need to do this on our keyboard. So I'm going to hit the enter button in order to press start. And then I'm going to go down to options here. In order to select the options, I'm going to hit the enter button again. And I'm going to jump down to control options. Hit enter. And here we see that we have our control options and the first option is setup player one. And if you have multiple players that you're going to be setting up, multiple gamepad controllers you want to map to this specific game, you would just go through, you know, after you do the player one's controller, you just go down to setup player two. So we're doing one player today, so we're going to jump into setup player one, and we're going to hit enter on our keyboard again. So here you can see that the um, setup here is kind of similar to what we have on the input configurations for RetroPie. We have our different uh, options here for controls and then on the right hand side we have the buttons that we need to map to them. So I'm going to be selecting the options with the keyboard and mapping them with the gamepad controller. So for the first one it says move up. I'm going to select that with my enter button and you'll see that it wipes out the option. So I need to just hit that option now on my gamepad controller. So I'm going to hit the d-pad up here and that automatically fills in. I'm going to go down to the next one, hit enter on my keyboard, and hit the down button on my D-pad. I'm going to go down now to move left, hit enter on my keyboard, and hit the D-pad left button on my gamepad controller. Now I'm going to hit the move right, hit enter on my keyboard, and hit the D-pad right on my gamepad controller. So now for attack one, we're going to select it again with the keyboard and I'm going to assign that to my X button. Go down to the next one, attack two. I'm going to assign that to my uh, circle. Attack three, square, and attack four, triangle. So now for jump, I'm actually going to put this one as my left analog, and for special, I'm going to assign that to my, um, let's see, I'll do it as my right shoulder, and then for start, I'll assign that as my start button. Alright, so now once these are all done, we're going to go down to OK, we're going to hit enter on our keyboard, and now those should be good. So I'm actually now navigating with my gamepad controller, so I do know that that worked. I'm going to go down and select back, select back again. So now we're going to jump into this game and test it out. We'll select new game, and arcade. So I am able to navigate my character around with my D-pad. And my left analog jumps. Special button does the special move. All 
All right, so everything does seem to be working perfectly well here. So I'm going to exit this, and I can do that by hitting my start button and then going down to the option that says end game. I'll select that, and it should bring me right back to my main menu in the game here. All right, perfect. And now in order to exit this, we just go to our main menu and we'll hit quit. And that's gonna kick us right back out to our game collection menu. So now that we've walked through this process, I do wanna mention a couple of things. You're probably gonna to wanna to do a little bit of testing these out to see exactly which configuration you want and which way you wanna map each of these games. Um, typically what I like to do is obviously all the directional movements are going to be either an analog stick if you have one on your gamepad controller or the d-pad and then your like attack buttons um, are usually going to be your, like your a b x y or if you're using the playstation controller it'll be the symbols um, usually special buttons I'll do as like a trigger or a shoulder button but you're going to want to do this to whatever specification works best for you so definitely go through this uh, there's no limit to how many times you can map this. So if you map it a certain way and you find that it doesn't work well or it's just not to your liking, you can go back and just repeat the process and the options there like we just did and totally change around the mapping. So it'll be kind of trial and error because Open Beats of Rage isn't a cut and dry system. It's not like going into like a PlayStation game with a PlayStation controller where you can just map it, you know, 100% exactly how it's supposed to be. There's definitely a lot of room for customizations because that's exactly what this particular collection really is. So now with all that being said, you will have to go through this mapping process for each game. However, it will save once you set this up for each title. So you will only have to do it one time. But again, since each of these games is totally separate from each other, it's not going to take the mapping from one game and apply it to all the games in this collection. You will have to do it manually for each title. So that's going to do it for today. If you found this video helpful, smash the like button for us. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of different tutorials just like this one, gameplay demos, product reviews, just a lot of great stuff based around retro gaming. And of course, check us out online on our website, www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.